Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Sophie Hannah here. I hope you guys are super well and staying safe. Who remembers this? Who remembers this? <sighs> Sad times. Guys, can you believe that that was a year ago? A year ago when I had my hair disaster. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I nearly, I nearly did a Britney moment and shaved my whole hair. I nearly did a Britney moment and shaved my whole hair off because I just genuinely didn't see a future for my hair and I just, it was just an awful, awful time. But guys, we are one year now since that day. Um, since the tears, since the just, ah, oh, it was just awful. And we're going to watch it back together. Just in case any of you guys haven't seen it, you've missed it, you missed my hair disaster. Um... I thought we'd rewatch it, we'd go back, we'd revisit that moment. And then I want to share with you guys how how I've been since then, what my journey's been like, and just do a one year update on my hair. And yeah, what it's like, the growth, um, how I've done it, because I'm sure, and I know actually, so many of you, when that happened, reached out and shared your hair disaster experiences and when you're having a bad hair day guys honestly it really affects your mood your mental health just it's just not good and to be honest I actually had a lot of horrible comments as well a lot of trolls um saying how silly I was for crying and how I shouldn't you know how I should have expected that to happen to my hair but when you put your trust in a hairdresser you put your trust in them, don't you? You sit there, you know, you relax, you kind of pampering yourself, you're getting your hair done, you say what you'd like done with your hair, you trust them that they're going to be able to, well, do that. And if they can't do that, offer an alternative. And yeah, you just trust them really and you expect to walk away and feel happy with your hair. And, you know, I'm sure as many of you guys have been in the same position as me, you've walked away and you've been in tears. Like, you know, it really does affect you. So, anyway... We're going to watch it back because I feel like we should watch back this moment. But yeah, guys, so I feel like we should watch it back. I've got it on my phone in front of me, but I'm going to pop it on the screen as well. And we can watch it together. So this was my hair before I went to the salon. So I had quite like vibrant blue roots. Um, and then the end, then it kind of like had a bit of a pinky hue. And then the very ends were like kind of like a silvery grey. It was actually quite a nice colour. Um, so that's kind of what I had walking into the salon. Obviously, I went to get my roots done. Um, so I had root growth. I just wanted, I basically asked a hairstylist to touch up my roots, bleach my roots, and then to clean up the blue and just to give me a clean base, whether that was going to be blonde or whether it was going to be a grey. Just like a clean blonde. Um, but whether whatever tone of blonde that was, like whatever it was, just wanted it to be clean of colour. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what it looked like going in. And then this is what it looked like after. And even looking at that now and seeing my face and like the tears, it does actually really upset me um, because I remember how awful, how awful it was. I know it's really crazy to say, but... Not my, not my whole world ended that day. But do you know what I mean? It was like, it just felt like I was l the lowest of the low. Um, I just, it, I didn't feel like me. It did not look like me. I didn't feel like me. The colour wasn't even like a proper colour. Like it looked chlorine-y. Like you can see kind of bits of green showing through. And then that some bits were really dark, like orangey coloured. Like it just wasn't great. And then also you can just see how like damaged the hair is you can see it's so thin there's bits poking out like i mean my hair is still thin today but it just i mean i will pop in photos of close ups because you'll be able to see the breakage that happened um yeah i had a lot of breakage at the front you can see it's so thin. At the back, I had breakage. I literally had, like, a tiny little, like, a mo... I basically had a mohawk going down my middle part in. Um, and I was discovering breakage um, each day that I had that hairstyle. Um, each day after I had my hair done like that, I was discovering breakage. Um, it was breaking off in the days after this point. And to be honest, it's actually still breaking off to this day now. 
So I'm still feeling the full effects of that hair disaster. It's actually crazy what one bad experience can do to your hair. But yeah, it was it was tough. You can see like the layers all like poking out where it snapped off. Um, it was it was bad. It was bad, 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 and. It basically was because they'd overlapped the bleach and on that one part where it had been overlapped, my hair just could not take it and it just completely snapped and gone. That's it. And actually, do you know what, guys? It's never actually happened to me before. In my... Well, actually, that is a lie. It has happened to me before, but not that extreme in terms of, like, how short it was. Like, I've never had it snap at the actual, like, root. Um, I've had it snap before from, like shoulder length down so back in the day i bleached my hair my myself like literally how long are we talking like five no lasted for five years i bleached it myself oh my god i must be like 14 years ago or something and it lasted for five years so think of five years worth of hair growth like i'm talking like my hair was like down here and then my hair i used to be able to sit on it and basically it snapped from like here down so it wasn't too bad because i just had it cut and i still had a blonde like shoulder length haircut and it was fine so that actually wasn't too bad obviously it was sad to say goodbye to my, the length of my hair but obviously back in those days we didn't have olaplex and i didn't go to a hair salon and i did all my hair myself so fair enough it breaking off um but yeah and then now i put my trust in um you know i could probably bleach my roots myself i did do that up until probably four or five years ago but now i like to go and get it done properly i need to i need to sustain my hair for my job um and what i do for you guys and also i'm not gonna lie it takes many hours to do your hair yourself it's hard to do the back so i'd rather go and just have some chill time in a salon be pampered and it's just quite a nice day out really you know this job's quite lonely to just get out of the house and talk to people so that's why i kind of like to go to a hair salon and it's just nice they've got all the products there if anything goes wrong like you know, maybe they need a toner or something because the roots are too brassy, like things like that. I just never had the, the stuff at home for it. Whereas if you're at a salon, you've got all the products that there to make sure that I leave with me being happy with my hair. So that's kind of why I go to a salon now. But yeah, it was just a bit of a disaster, that whole experience. And yeah, so that is what happened. And you've seen pictures of my hair all snapping off and yeah it's snapped off up until even now recently it's still been snapping off but that's because basically i'm going to show you the new growth so this is my hair now feels super soft i just had the color done the other day but it's still got bits of like leftover kind of bluey tint in from where i had um a previous purple color but yeah my hair feels great like it feels great i can i actually feel like it's getting a little bit thicker now i feel like it's thickening thick and in up and basically my uh, hairdresser that i go to now um she um had to have an operation bless her so basically i haven't hadn't seen her for about three months so when i went in to see her this time it was kind of quite cool to say to her like what do you think of my hair now you haven't seen it for three months and she said it is getting there now like i feel like it's getting there it's taken this long for me to feel like my hair's getting there um which is crazy because we're at a year now um and i reckon give it another six months and i feel like i'm gonna be even more happier uh, i just need to keep sustaining exactly what i'm doing so yeah growth so remember when i had that tiny mohawk basically down the center of my parting that hair now has grown this long how insane is that and basically at the back i had like a chunk here that all basically snapped off that is now this like look at how long that is so yeah if we get that and bring it to the side you can kind of see that breakage so that a year's growth this is a year's growth has now grown to here, right here. So basically, at this point, is where that old snappage, snappage and breakage happened. So my hair's now down to here. So there are still some sections under, because basically my hair didn't all snap just from here, it snapped all over. 
um, because it got overlapped all over my head. That was like the weakest point down the center, but it snapped all over. So like, basically you can kind of see, I'm gonna get a comb for this. I have a lot of layers in my hair. So we'll go and pick up some layers. But can you see here, like, all of this is really thick up until that point where it snapped before. So all of these hairs here at the end are still snapping, but only from this point. Because basically, once your hair is literally over-processed and to the point that there's no going back, which is basically what my hair went through, I essentially just sustained my hair whilst it was growing out. So there's still been breakage that's happened over the last year because obviously where that line was, where the bleach was overlapped, that is just like a pressure point. And all my hair didn't snap off at the same time, thank God. But obviously it, it kept snapping over time. So I was just basically been sustaining as much as I can whilst it's been growing out. But you can see here, like these bits need, well, eventually they're just gonna grow out and it's gonna get cut off. So that's why basically this bit here is still, you know, it's quite thin because the bulk of my hair and the thickness is up here. So we are getting there. So my bob is basically really, I kind of need all of this cut off. But hopefully in six months time, it will get down to here and I will have, because obviously in six months I would have had my hair. So I get my roots done every six to seven weeks. And every time I get my roots done, I have a trim. So hopefully by the end of the year, all of this will have grown down and we'll be at a blunt bob again. And then I can decide what I want to do. But I would love to grow it a little bit longer if I can. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of where I am, really. This side, again, is the same. You can see the bulk of it. The bulk of the hair is up the top here. So it's quite thick up here until it gets to here. And then it goes a little bit funny on these ends where they're a bit thin. Um, but yeah, the, mo the main bulk of the breakage definitely was this kind of top section. You know, also with the UV rays, when you go outside, you go on holiday and stuff... That like this part of your top a bit of your hair is the is the most fragile section uh, because there's so much heat and UV rays and everything on it all the time. And also this is the for me having short hair. This is the bit that I style all the time. So this is the bit that's yeah is is getting there though, guys. It is getting there, but I cannot wait to try and get a blunt bob back because that is like what I had before. Uh, I'm growing out my bangs. That's been a journey as well, because obviously having bangs, you need to style them. So styling the hair all the time whilst you're trying to grow out very, very damaged bleach hair was difficult. So we've had, you know, a bit of breakage around the front sections. Basically, all this front section has been very, very fragile the whole time. But I feel like it's finally getting there now. This side's still a little bit thin, but I've got new hairs growing. And yeah, we are getting there. So... How have I got to this point? Let me tell you. I'm going to take you through a lot of the products. I'll, put, I'll pop in, like, different photos over um, the last year of, like, my hair and how it's looked and stuff. But basically, the first thing I did after that hair disaster was, well, I got the colour fixed. And then after that, I left my hair. I didn't apply heat. I did not get my roots bleached for five months so that was a long time and I didn't colour my hair for a while. I just left it. Um, yeah, it was quite sad because it meant that I couldn't do hair tutorials. And obviously you guys didn't know then, but I was launching Sophie Hannah Hair. And even with that, I had to kind of stop dyeing my hair with my own products, which is really sad because I just needed to just leave my hair. Not that my, that my hair dye is um, damaging or anything, because it's not at all, but I just needed to just not touch my hair, basically, which I pretty much did for about five months. Um, and then when I got my roots done, I started kind of experimenting again, but very, very slowly and gently. Um, and yeah, and basically, I really honestly wouldn't say until the last couple of months, really, like two months where I've really started to feel a difference in my hair. Like really feel like it's getting back to a good state and it's getting a little bit thicker again. 
Um, it looks really flat today because I just left it um, straight so I could actually show you guys like, what it feels like and also all the layers um, that are basically in it. But yeah, so getting my roots done and going back to a hairdresser again. So I completely changed hair salons, obviously. I don't feel like you're ever going to go back to the same person that's kind of caused you a hair disaster. Um, luckily, my friend actually works in a hair salon and she chatted to them in there and she was like, so I've got an amazing friend at work. She wants to do your hair. She's going to look after it. She's incredible. And she literally is incredible. Like she has taken so much care of my hair since going to her back in November last year and she's just she spends hours on it because she's so particular with like what products she's using the application is so like precise um and she's just amazing and she doesn't use anything that's going to be too damaging on my hair she wouldn't put my hair through something she didn't think it was going to go through like she's re I really feel like she is actually looking after my hair now and taking care of it and pushing it to as far as she thinks my hair can go and how comfortable she's pushing like willing to push it so yeah I've got someone really looking after my hair and I mean guys it shows because look at that hair growth and it feels strong like my hair feels strong um so yeah so that's kind of where I am with a hairdresser now um so I'm happy with that and I'm happy with my choice in my hairdresser and the salon and yeah, the products that they use and everything, and it's just amazing. But then out of the salon, the products that I've been using at home. Right. I don't even know where to start. But when I started um, using products, I went into Olaplex. So I used Olaplex at the start. And if I'm honest, I really felt like it made my hair worse. Um, I just couldn't find any products that would salvage my hair because it just kept breaking off, it didn't feel good. I felt like I couldn't do anything with it. I used my Dyson Air Wrap here and there, but on a very low heat, and really, I kind of just air dried my hair to be honest, um, which is actually really good for your hair. You should do that anyway. You should air dry it up to like 80% anyway. You shouldn't blow dry your hair from wet because when you're blow drying your hair from wet, the heat is heating up that water that is in your hair, and essentially, think about having hot burning water on your hair it's just it's just not good um so yeah I've done many things okay let's think about this so I'm actually going to just go over the products that I've been using probably pretty consistently over the last sort of four three to four months where I feel like I've seen the most difference in my hair um because I've tried a lot of products and I just felt like I've not really got anywhere until recently I've tried um hair tablets i've tried serums i've tried lots of different shampoo and conditioner ranges hair masks you name it i have tried so many things on my hair and this is what i feel like collectively has been helping it number one invest in a microfiber hair towel guys this is key you do not want to be putting a harsh towel on your hair especially when it's wet and bleached and fragile. This is so soft. I wrap my hair in it and it basically, I leave it on whilst I'm doing my makeup in the morning. So I tend to wash my hair in the morning and then it will just dry, like it's so absorbent. It will dry, take some of the water out of my hair and then my hair, I will leave kind of till it's again, 80% dry or I just let it air dry after I've used this once I finish my makeup. Um, and then... In terms of styling, I really try and avoid the heat. If I do blow dry my hair, I will quickly just do a quick blow dry on the Dyson um, Air App. Obviously using a heat protect spray. This is my heat protect spray that I use from V05. It's great and it protects you for up to 230 degrees heat and yeah, for soft and shiny hair. So I love using this product. Always use that um, when my hair is damp before I blow dry and also before I apply any straighteners. When I do use straighteners, they are, I use them very minimally. So I've, my hair's very straight, luckily. So when I blow dry my hair, I will literally just straighten the ends or I flick my ends up and then I might quickly just go over my bangs. But literally, that's pretty much all I do. I try and avoid kind of like section in my hair and using heat. I kind of just like quickly, roughly go over it. And then I style my hair with little clips or hair bands. So I can kind of get away with it because I tend to style my hair. But when I'm around the house, I don't really do much to my hair. I'll just leave it down. 
Um, but throughout that process of growing my hair out, I wore my hair up a lot. Um, I gelled it back. I glued it, literally glued it down. We've got to be glued. I'd wear my hair up. Thank God claw clips are in. Um, so yeah, that's something else that's kind of helped my hair grow is, well, not really helped it grow, but throughout the process is just wearing it up um, to like make me feel a bit better about my hair and about it growing out. So yeah. That's key. Microfiber hair towel. Um, very, very key. And guys, secretly, I don't want to reveal this yet, but I will. But this is a Sophie Hannah hair one and it's launching very, very soon. 29th of June um, next Wednesday. So keep your eyes out for that. Sneaky peek. Um, and then, okay, treatments. K18. I couldn't find my big tub, but K18, guys, this is a game changer. Game changer. And a little goes a long way, and you don't need to do a K18 treatment very often. So that's something that I have found out, that I was doing it too much. And I was causing too much protein buildup in my hair. And again, that's something to be so careful of. When you have bleached hair, you are going to grab those repair protein shampoos and conditioners and masks and treatments. But actually your hair might actually not need it. You might get too much protein and then that's gonna cause your hair to snap even more. So I used to do this every sort of two to three washes. So you shampoo and then you apply this and then you can apply uh, like leave-in products after it, but you leave this in your hair um, and it takes four minutes to activate. And that's, yes, yeah, so easy, so much easier than Olaplex. I love K18, but I've now, I go to about every six to seven washes, I will do a K18 treatment. And then all those other washes in between, I'll use like a repair shampoo, something like this from Redken. I love the Redken Extreme shampoo for strength and repair for damaged hair, or the acidic bonding concentrate one as well. That's definitely the conditioner, but the shampoo version of this I use. Um, both of those are incredible. I love Redken products. You guys know I've worked with them a lot. And yeah, I just love their ranges. So Redken shampoos, I love. Um, but then when it comes to like, I don't really use conditioner. I get rid of that. Well, I do use a conditioner, but as a leave-in, I'm all about the masks. So this is one of my favorite masks that I have been using. It smells incredible. So nice. It's from Kristen S. It's a reconstructive moisture mask. Moisture, guys. So, all those other times that I do my hair um, between K18, I am adding in moisture. Because bleached hair lacks a lot of moisture. Um, and yeah, so that's why I kind of want to inject the moisture back into my hair. It just doesn't hold it very well when your hair is bleached. It loses it quite quickly. So, moisture, moisture, moisture. I use a moisture mask. I let it, let it sit um, for like literally sometimes 20 minutes. Sometimes I leave it on for a few hours. I don't ever sleep in it overnight purely because when my hair is wet, it is very fragile. And obviously if I'm rolling about on my pillow, regardless of whether I'm wearing a hair towel or not, I just don't want to add any extra breakage to my hair, to be honest. So yeah, that is uh, one of my favorite masks. But also guys, my Sophie Hannah hair hair dye. So every time I've been coloring my hair, this is basically like a hair colour, semi-permanent hair colour and hair mask in one with all the added benefits. Vitamin B5, coconut oil, the rice protein, the hydrolyzed quinoa. This is so conditioning and it's going to add so much moisture in your hair. Like, it's amazing. So every time I've dyed my hair, if I've topped it up, this is basically like a mask as well. So every time I've topped up my hair, I'm topping up my, giving my, giving my hair some added benefits and ingredients to just really really help it so yeah that's what i love about my sophie hannah hair dyes is that when you're topping up the dye you're also injecting moisture and shine back into your hair so love that for that um and then scalp massager this is something i've been doing so when i shampoo my hair i'm getting in with the scalp massager getting that blood flow to my scalp. Grow Gorgeous um, Hair Growth Serum for Fine Thinning Hair. Love this. Again, apply that, massage it in. This has honestly, ooh, has honestly been helping my hair grow. 
Um, Because obviously that's another thing I wanted to focus on isn't just kind of sustaining my hair. It's also growing it out. I needed to grow out that breakage. So using a growth serum has been amazing. And I love this one. A little goes a long way and it's just great. I have used um, another one called Shampoo, which I'll link below. That was also really great. A Pitta Hair Growth Serum. Um, kind of similar. Um, and then I've used hair vitamins before, but actually they kind of messed up with my thyroid, which was a bit weird. So I stopped using hair vitamins. Um, so I just go for the um, Growth Serum um, instead of like Growth Hair Vitamins. Uh, then... Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Strength and Moisture Leave-In Mask. So basically a leave-in conditioner mask. Um, love this. So I apply this after I've done my K18, just so I can make sure I'm injecting some moisture into my hair. And also I apply this even after I've done a mask, I'll just inject a little bit more moisture back into my hair. So I just add this on um, where my hair is wet. That I love. Then, oh, we'll go back to another shampoo because this is another shampoo I've been loving. Um, is the Osmo Detoxify Clarifying Shampoo. It's like a cleansing shampoo. Obviously, I, I'm using a lot of products. I get a lot of product build up, especially when I'm using the scalp like serums and stuff. Um, and I also use another product on my scalp. I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, just a cleanser. So I probably use this, I don't know, every kind of four washes maybe. And I also use this if I'm wanting to fade my dye out in preparation of dyeing my hair a new colour is great and really just cleansing your hair. It's kind of like a bit of a head and shoulders kind of thing, but it really cleanses your scalp. And um, yeah, if you want to get rid of some buildup of hair dye or anything, this is great. This is another product I've been using on my scalp. It is an energising thickening tonic from Daveness. Love Daveness, the brand. The salon that I go to is actually like a Daveness like salon. Uh, where they sell their products and use their products. They love their products so much, but they are really, really good. Um, and it's a thickening tonic for scalp and fragile thinning hair. So again, because I felt like my hair is thin and it is fragile, I've been adding this on my scalp and again, massaging it in. Um, yeah, and then less heat, as I said. Microfiber towel, it speeds up drying time. Um, like air drying time, if you're air drying your hair. You can avoid applying heat with it. Um, moisture, moisture, moisture. Protein treatments like K18, but don't do them too often. Break it up with a lot of like moisture. Um, and being patient, <laughs> being patient with my hair, getting regular trims. Um, I don't really brush my hair very often. If I do, I'm using a wet detangler from Tangle Teaser. And I really gently brush my hair. But I don't really brush my hair when it's dry. Because obviously I don't want to tug at my hair and like break it off. So I tend to be very careful when I... Yeah, I don't really brush my hair to be honest. It doesn't really need brushing. With all the moisture treatments and like masks that I do and serums and oils. that Oh, I haven't shown you my oils and serums that I put in my hair. I don't really need to brush it. Serum. I love this one. Daveness again, the hair serum. Illuminating colour enhancing serum for coloured hair. Um, it is so good. I love this. And also a hair oil. I use the coconut oil. Damage remedy. Miracle oil. Got hair all over it. Drench dry damage strands with the secret of Maui. This ultra rich reviving blend with coconut oil. Vanilla, vanilla bean extract. Helps to soften and revive strands. Silky soft island girl hair. Love it. From um, OGX. Love that. So yeah, I've got a whole range of products. I will pop links below in case any of you guys are interested. But yeah, you just have to be patient and use the right products for your hair. And it is trial and error. I have tried so many different products. Mixed and matched my routine up a bit to just really figure out what my hair needs. And now I'm feeling the benefits of it all. And now I feel like I'm finally getting somewhere with my hair. But yeah, that growth, the new growth is good. It's strong. We're getting there. Like, it's not got far to go. It's so close. But yeah, guys, thought I'd update you. I hope this was interesting for you. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've done. Guys, how often I wash my hair. So I try and wash it less now. 
Um, because especially at the start, I was finding when I was washing my hair, that was when it was breaking off. So I try and wash my hair about twice a week. So every three to four days, I wash my hair. Um, and again, that's been really helping because you let the natural oils build up on your scalp, which really help your hair. If you get rid of those natural oils by washing your hair like every day, it's just not, not going to be great, especially when you've got bleached hair and you're trying to grow it out. Um, so yeah, washing my hair less has helped a lot, um, especially at the start. Like at the start, I think I was probably washing it like once a week or something. Um, but yeah. I wash it about every three to four days and that's really, really helping my hair. Um, but you can use dry shampoo, can't you, in the meantime? So, And also wearing your hair up, gel it down. Um, the Eco Hair Gel is so good. Let me show you. Eco Hair Gel, because it's got olive oil in it. It repairs, conditions, defines, moisturises, smooths, shines for all hair types. It's water-based and it's got a max hold. Guys, if you love gelling your hair uh, or you don't want to wash your hair too often gel it stick it up no one's going to see the grease so that's kind of like what i've been trying to do a lot with my hair is just like get by without like washing it too often um but yeah i'm getting there what do you guys think of my hair um before and after a year later it's getting there it's getting there anyways guys sorry this has been so long-winded but i wanted to do a huge hair update and sh show you and tell you everything but yeah thanks so much for watching any questions leave them below I hope I haven't missed anything out. So if I have, please do ask away. And I'll see you guys in another video very soon. Peace out, guys.